on this week's episode of Aftershock, Carolina takes a look at Yonuts. And Ethan catches us up on all things Lightning Athletics. Alyssa lets us know about the new bag policy. What's up, Cypress Spay? I'm Nick Ramos. And I'm Tati Del Carpio. And, and Aftershock, Aftershock starts, starts now. now. Hey, Tati, did you hear they're doing homecoming here at school? Yeah, and I think it's gonna make it a lot easier for us. And Josie dug a little deeper to find out what's going on with this year's homecoming. The traditional high school homecoming usually consists of fancy attire, high costs, and average decorations. However, this year, Cypress Bay SGA took a turn for the better by implementing the new Baychella Music Festival. We wanted to change homecoming to do something different. You know, Cypress Bay is known for being kind of like a trendsetter within the Broward County High School. So we wanted to just do something completely different that no other school has done before. Um, music festivals are very popular of today's high school generation. So we figured, you know, it'd be great if we could kind of replicate that experience at school. Senior Madison Lehman feels that it is important for students to be open-minded in regards to this change. It's a new experience that SGA is bringing to the school that SGA hopes will provide a new kind of twist to homecoming and SGA is working really, really hard on all the decorations to make sure it's worth the money this time and who knows, it might be really fun and you might get super bad FOMO because all your friends are going to be having fun with food trucks and dancing all night with super cool DJs that SGA has. As seen around the bay, SGA is putting forth their best efforts to promote the dance. Well, today we had our launch day, which um, we, in the morning, we had a pep rally with cheerleading, and then we dropped the homecoming banner, and then um, during all lunches we have activities set out, so there's things such as Jenga, hula hoop, just kind of to bring the whole, like, Coachella vibe, like, just to bring, we have, like, temporary tattoos that people are putting on, we have wristbands and, like, promotional flyers that we're giving out, and Chef and I, Ms. Osmento and I are planning to have something, like, every week, we don't know what yet, but we want to keep, like, the, the momentum going. Baychella will be taking place on Saturday, November 3rd in the gym and courtyard. Ticket prices for the festival are yet to be announced. Josie Clancy, CBTV. Open the door. Okay, but let's be honest here, donuts are the most superior food. They're good for breakfast and dessert. Are you done with your little donut rant? Yeah, I am. Just in time to see Carolina's restaurant view of Yonuts. For this week's restaurant review, I decided to go check out Yonuts. Yonuts is a restaurant located on North Harrison Parkway in 595. Its specialty, selling a variety of frozen yogurts and donuts, hence the name Yonuts. Looking at the menu, I decided to order three different flavors of the mini Yonut, and I also decided to order the new edition Smash Donut. Mini Yonuts are a bite-sized version of their average-sized donuts that pack the same punch. I chose the flavors Caramel Oreo, French Toast, and S'more. These munchkins taste just as their flavors describe giving you a sweet sensation and leaving you wanting more. Moving on, I decided to kick it up a notch. I chose to have a Superman Smash Donut. 
The Smash Donut is a vanilla glazed donut cut in half, with a scoop of your own choice of ice cream flavor placed in the center, then smashing the outer donuts together in a hot press. This creates a warm, sweet exterior with a cool, creamy center. It turned out to be the perfect savory dessert for my sweet tooth. Not only does Gionuts have a fun, family-friendly environment with its employees and its decor, it's also the perfect place for some good old comfort food in a new style. I give Yonuts 5 out of 5 stars. Carolina Rapp, CB TV. Hey, have you seen Eugenia? Who? Our vice president of competitions, the director of education for Pride, our PSA producer. Oh, yeah. And uh, Rhea caught up with her to find out how she impacts the Pride Club. I wanted to spread my culture to everyone else. Eugenia Schwarin is a senior at Cypress Bay who wants to make a difference in her final year of high school. I joined Pride because when I came in here in ninth grade, I wanted to like be involved and share like diversity around the school. As director of education for the Pride Club, she wants to leave behind a legacy. So I joined this club in ninth grade because I wanted to promote and spread diversity throughout the school through many of the events that we do. I'm an immigrant and I think I could spread my diversity with other people. She helped plan this informative night for students and parents. I organized this event, informative night. I started planning this event um, since the school year started. So I've been um, making the PowerPoints, talking to the teachers, to the hosts of the event. Um, also, I have been asking for sponsors like Cream, um, Color Me Mind. Since her freshman year, she has known that she's wanted to become more involved in the Pride Club as she got older. Well, Eugenia, uh, she became an officer two years ago. And before that, she was always a very active member. We loved her. She was always there, even though uh, she was not an actual officer of the club. And obviously, like the next year when she applied to be an officer, we were just glad to have her here. When I applied for this position, I wanted to do that. I wanted to organize everything to come out perfectly with no errors. No she demonstrates multiple qualities of a leader that helped the Pride Club succeed. She's a, she's a good leader, definitely. She's, she's, um, she's patient. I think she's really uh, responsible and she's dedicated to the club. She's shown me what like a good leader does. She's very organized. She's honest. Uh, like it's rare to find like when people don't do something. Sometimes they don't tell you. But Eugenia is like, hey, I didn't do this. But she solves it. She's like a problem solver, and I, I'm really happy to have her here. Through her hard work and determination, Eugenia hopes to make this year a success. Ria Thomas, CB TV. Yo, Gage, Dolphins just beat the Jets. We're two and zero. We beat them twenty to twelve. Isn't that crazy? What do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's awesome, dude. I thought you liked the Dolphins. What's wrong with that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that, yeah. I, that was so funny when I teach you. Are you even listening to me? Yeah, oh, yeah. Dude, dude I don't know what's worst. going on with you. You're just looking at Instagram and not even paying attention to me. So, I, you know, I'm just going to leave. Let's see ya. Alright, um, I'll hit you up later. I might have some homework, so. Hey, yo, like, check out this meet. Ike? And now to Ethan with this week's Lightning Athletics.
What's up, Cypress Bay? As the MLB season is coming to a close, Cypress Bay Baseball is starting back up again. Here's Neil with the coverage. On September 20th, Cypress Bay Baseball plays their first game against Pines High School. The start of the game was evenly matched with both teams keeping up zero runs in the first three innings. The Lightning managed to score one run at the bottom of the fourth but Pines answers back with six runs to end the inning. Despite the Lightning's best efforts, they were only able to score one more run ending the game at a 7-2 loss. NBA superstar LeBron James has the motto, strive for greatness, and that's exactly what athletes at Cypress Bay are trying to do. As the track and field season gets closer, more and more athletes are on the grind to be the best at the Bay. One of the many athletes is junior Grace Bustamante, who, through the guidance of her coaches, find a discipline she never thought she would find an interest in, shot put and discus. When I was trying out for the track team, the coach asked who wants to try throwing. I didn't know what throwing was, but I decided to try out just for the heck of it. And first we tried shot put, and he just saw that I excelled in that. I couldn't run fast, but I could throw far. So I started doing shot put, and then at my first meet, I did discus for the first time. So I had to figure out how to do discus in five minutes before I threw. So that is what definitely has gotten me into that sport. Shot put and discus hasn't always been simple for her though. Grace has noticeably improved since she started and is still striving to get better. I have seen my spin before I couldn't do the spin move for discus, but now I have definitely been improving on that and I definitely see more improvement in the future for that. Just like Gray saw her own improvement as an athlete, she also saw her own improvement as a person because of shot put and discus. Sport, it's made me a better person because it makes me set goals for the future and what I should strive to be and how to make me a better and stronger person than I've ever been. And it just, it makes me feel very satisfied with myself when I make new records. As the track and field season gets closer, the lights are shining on Grace as she seeks to set new records at the Bay. Tomas Kilikeo, CBTV. Believe it or not, video gaming is emerging as a sport all around the world. Here's this week's In My Opinion. What's up Cypress Bay? I'm Ethan Gare and in this week's In My Opinion, I'm going to be talking about esports. As the last 10 years have shown, a massive growth within the field of esports, and several questions emerged, such as how much is it growing, and will it continue to grow? And the answer to that question is a huge yes. Video gaming is a fast-growing sport, and gamers can make up to millions annually. Gamers such as Ninja make $500,000 a month playing Fortnite. He uses Switch as his way of streaming the video game, and a lot of his subscribers donate to his channel. Like in every other sport, there is a championship to be played for, and esports is no different. The name of this championship is the League of Legends, and 40,000 people come to see the best of the best play their favorite video games. The growth of esports will probably keep increasing, but that's just my opinion. Ethan Gare, signing off. That's all we have for Cypress Bay Athletics. Until next time, I'm Ethan Gare, CBTV Sports. Hey kids, today we're going to talk about science. Big by the science guy. Science rules. Big by the science guy. Did you know that 99.99% .99 of atoms are filled with empty space? In this experiment, I'm going to face through that door by aligning my atoms. I did it. Okay, kids, today we're going to be talking about pain. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. No, not that pain, silly. Physical pain. Yeah. To feel pain, messages travel from the receptors on your skin to your spinal cord and then to your brain. That's rad, Ikol. Now I'm going to demonstrate pain. Come here, assistant. Boy, she guess.
Do you think I could bring this to a football game? Yeah, I definitely don't think so, but here's a list of the catch us up on the new bag policy in Broward County Schools. Broward County has issued a new policy that bags exceeding 12 inches by 12 inches will not be permitted at after school events. Broward County implemented a policy to enhance security uh, specifics at schools. They deemed it wise to include bags that were in excess of 12 inches by 12 inches to enhance more tighter security measures at Broward County events. With the various amount of activities and events that take place after school, students and parents will have to be mindful of the new policy. In an actual football game, you're restricted to what you can bring to. I feel like it's not a very heavy restriction. It's actually kind of reasonable. For safety reasons, I think it's now become necessary. Putting the safety of the kids first is the most important thing. Teachers and coaches will also have to adapt to these new changes. It will be some growing pains, but it shouldn't be anything too painful. When we do our evening events, um, it will be a good thing for safety because, you know, when we have all the artwork and things up, having big bags can sometimes get in the way. With this new rule being put into action, schools hope to make campuses a safer place. Alyssa Wheelock, CB TV. What's up, Neil? Why acting so sad, bro? Nothing. No, bro, like, for real, what's up? It's nothing specific. I'm just feeling down. I don't know how to explain it. Okay, you don't have to talk to me about it, but, like, trust me, talking helps, bro. Just talk to someone about it and figure it out. Maybe you're right. I should go talk to someone. Thanks, Jesus. The Marvel Universe is getting pretty intense. I know. I love the new Captain Marvel trailer. Will Julian run around the school to see how you guys feel about upcoming superhero movies? What's going on, Cypress Bay? I'm Julian Bonilla, and on this week's Man on the Street, we went around campus asking you guys about your favorite superheroes. Uh, what superhero movies are you excited for coming up in the 2018-2019 uh, cinematic season? Probably the next Infinity War, right? I don't really know. Uh, probably Captain Marvel. Because Captain Marvel? It's probably going to tie into Infinity War Part 2. So, you know, hell yeah. Shazam. There's like a like a new Spider-Man coming out with Michael B. Jordan. Uh, probably Infinity War 2. Infinity War Part 2? Why Infinity War Part 2? Uh, probably the first movie was my favorite of all of the Marvel movies, so that's going to be a good one. If you were to pick one superhero to be your best friend for life, uh, who would it be? Um, Flash. Deadpool. Why Deadpool? Because he's relatable. Tony Stark. Obviously Spider-Man. He's a billionaire, bro. He can cover you with anything. Iron Man. Iron Man? Why Iron Man? Yeah, he's cool. He's like, he's cool, you know? Seems to me like you guys have some very interesting superhero preferences. Julian Bonilla, CBTV. That's all for this week's episode of Aftershock. If you want to watch more episodes, visit us at CypressBayTV.com. And follow us on Twitter while you're at it, at CypressBayCBTV. I'm Nick Ramos. And I'm Tati Del Carpio. Thanks for watching.